business credit. First, I want to thank ATW for this link. It got me started on what appears to be a fairly long road of building business credit. I made a new thread for this because I think it is critical for any new business starting out. Right up there with setting up the legal entity, you should begin building the business credit. This is something I neglected to do and I am wishing I had known or taken the time to learn what I am learning now. I have two companies, one which has been in operation five years gasp and the other just shy of two. Neither one has any credit whatsoever. Everything is in my own or partner's names. Huge mistake, as we all know, one very important factor in many business ventures is the advantage of leveraging OPM. The ability to utilize OPM frees up your own capital for other ventures or safekeeping. Our company is now looking to secure lines of credit in the business name, so that we can be more aggressive or do more deals and I am sure a positive credit rating really would have helped. So figure I will attempt to save someone else the mistake. Appears to be a fairly straightforward process, which requires the following, at a minimum colon 1. Establish a Dun and Bradstreet number for your company. It will be this organization, along with Experian who track credit for your company. This process is free although you can pay to make things move faster too. Establish at least 5 credit relationships I have read it takes 5 to get a score just like personal credit, not too many people want to loan to a business without any record. It seems the best place to start is with smaller vendors, think Staples. Office Max, Home Depot, Texaco, Lowe's, FedEx, etc. Many can be applied for online many will require a personal guarantee and then, after 6 months or so, will release the personal guarantee, if you request dot again, just like personal credit, it's all about time, the earlier you start, the better. Starting a new business can be very hectic and this might be the last thing on your mind, when you are juggling a million other things but just think about the power this can provide. Established credit for a company can act like an entire separate person, with access to more and more funding if you treat it right, it can make or break your growth potential. I am sure there are lots of people on this forum who have experience in this topic. Please, feel free to add. I, for one, am listening. A lot of the people posting on credit boards are advocates of getting your DUNS number the free way. I totally understand where they are coming from, but chose to pay to get easier and quicker access as you had outlined in your previous post. Unfortunately my DUNS paid X score is not going to help me avoid personal guarantees until we have 2 plus years. I wish there was a way around that. But other than high cost unsecured credit lines 6 to 10 points I have found no way to get it done without a PG. Unless of course you are talking about small things like Staples, Sam's Club, DHL etc. Very true, Jim, good point. For the banks, the magic number is 2 years. Every single banker I have spoken with 12 to 15 wants 2 years of history. Our larger, more active, real estate investment company will hit the two-year mark in approximately three months. It seems like this credit process takes, at the very least, six months to build, as they want a history, not two months of staples activity. So, I am just kicking myself now for not having paid attention to this earlier. I have to build that if I went forward with a great credit record. In addition to our solid business model or track record, it would have been just one more item in our favor particularly with how cautious bankers seem to be on re these days. Not to say that we won't be able to get something and work up from there. I just that I hate the fact that it could have been more, which would have allowed us to grow even faster. Oh well, no use crying over the past. Learn and move on. But for anyone who just started out, learn from my mistake and get to work on the business credit. Oh, and one final note, 
An American Express charge card is not a credit card. It's a charge card and has no impact to your credit unless it goes unpaid for 60 days or more. We have had an AA charge card in the business name secured by PG for the past two years, to which we have charged tens of thousands of dollars per month and due to my ignorance, this did absolutely nothing for us. Update spoke with several representatives at D&B as well as multiple business credit building companies. Jim, I think I now see why you opted for the more expensive option with D&B. I have learned that in order to get a score and not just a company number, from D&B, you must purchase what they call the credit builder option, $549. D&B starts you off with a random score, based on the number of employees you have and you are responsible for building from there. Another option is to hire a third-party company, who will work with you and D&B to build a solid credit score for your company. I spoke with four different companies today, which offer such a service and of the ones I talked to, their pricing ranged from $1100 to $1650. Some claimed they could get you to $80, others as much as $90. Some offered guarantees, others did not. Finally, some claimed they could accomplish such a goal in 90 days, others as much as 9 months. The key, which each of these companies is offering is the advantage of savings in time. I have to think it is possible although I do not know for sure to build business credit, without any of these services D and B included but it might take you a full two years to get to a solid score of 80 plus as I stated earlier, we are now less than six months from hitting the two year mark with our most active company. At this point, we want to be able to immediately access funding when this time comes. Therefore, we are opting to pay a third party company to assist us in building the credit. The savings we will experience in having our own funding source as opposed to using hard money will outweigh the cost of this program in less than a month. So, like I always say, it's all about ROI. As long as the information is not confidential, I will be happy to share exactly what steps they take me through. Perhaps those of you who have more time will be able to execute the steps without the added cost. You can get to 80 plus DNB score within 3 to 4 months by yourself without paying anyone and you will have to spend no more than 2 hours of your time. Agreed Peter 2. The DNB people are high pressure salespeople. Be aware of that as you begin your process of building biz. Credit. They are there to upsell you and make you think it is impossible to do it without them. Not true. You can do it W or out them. Don't believe all that high-pressure stuff you get when you talk to them. Really? That would be fabulous. Any suggestions as to where I might find guidance on this topic? I spent the better part of a day this week, calling every small merchant I could come up with Staples, Shell, Texaco, FedEx, etc. And none of them were willing to extend our business a small line to get started. I also called D and B multiple times and tried to list existing business references with them. They told me over and over that I would first have to purchase the $549 option to establish a starting place. You are right. I found them to be some of the worst salespeople I have ever come across. I also went to the bookstore today to purchase a book on this specific subject. They did not have anything in stock but offered to order for me. I was planning to puke this online instead. What am I missing? Thanks for your feedback. The link you posted at the very beginning of the thread is the best resource I have found. The people on that board know how to get it done. Any biz with a phone number listed in 411 can get a $750 card from Staples. Is your biz phone hash listed? No, our number is not listed. We own quite a few properties and, for that reason, we do our best to remain unlisted. Not looking to have tenants showing up at the house all partners work from home. Our business address mailing addresses to a UPS location. I wonder how I could link a phone number to the business without having it here at the house. Perhaps, this is the importance of having a second entity. Staples, etc. won't approve you unless you have a listed hash. 
it is how they verify that you are real. Even a secondary line that you never answer and don't have voicemail would work. Plus one I have three businesses listed with DNB with various companies reporting and paid X is 80 plus and I didn't pay DNB a cent to get them listed. I highly suggest you not pay them anything. Is a great resource to figure out how to get this done. By the way the two year thing isn't necessarily true. In my experience. For example, I had the good fortune of incorporating a biz, following steps get phone number, etc. Applying for small stuff staples, etc. Within nine months or so, I had a business with over 100k in unsecured credit lines, no personal guarantees, and various other useful lines 50k at Delft, for instance. It can be done, just takes some diligence and a little luck. Good luck. On this one, phone companies can set up business phone numbers that print to the white pages i.e. are listed. The important part but simply forward to another number for your go straight to a voicemail box. Mine costs something like $15 a month or line for that service. By the way, use this phone number as the contact number on any applications you have. It is good idea to separate phone numbers from your house phone anyway. Thanks, ATW. Appreciate the input. I will have to look into whether or not I can list a number, without an address, and if, without an address, merchants like staples, etc. would be satisfied. A phone number, pretty funny to me that this is the missing link particularly after spending all that time filling out applications. That's what we get for running our company on sales phones can you or anyone else say what is typically takes to get an 80 plus score with D and B? Is it just a matter of obtaining the five merchant accounts, to which everyone seems to refer? I will continue to research on that credit board's site. Sorry for the onslaught of questions. Just determined to get moving on this, so that we are in the best position possible. Thanks again. If you use your cell and don't mind having that listed in the white pages, you can list that hash as a foreign listing for about $10 for the year. You can even choose to list it in a different town if you like. Thanks to all for the responses. I have yet to sign up for any service, so I will first give this a go, on my own. That said, looks like you all might have saved me at least $1000 really love this forum, MJ. I will have to buy each of you a drink someday. We'll keep you posted. I also posted this in your other thread. If your goal is to obtain Lux, your business credit report has very little importance. Most banks will only look at your personal credit report, and every bank will require a personal guarantee as well. PHL, I agree with Peter, as for my experiences in getting the Lux for the business, they looked at both the DRB and Experian business I know they pulled them B or C they asked me questions about some dissipancies in the info showing on each but clearly were basing their decision more on my personal reports than anything else. Note, my looks are all stated income, no doc applications. I understood clearly that the looks would max lower than the full doc apps, but not passing tax returns over to a bank was worth keeping the confidentiality. One luck grantor asked for docs, I demurred advising them that doing so would invalidate the whole reason I was in corpt in Nevada, for the privacy. I thought for sure that would kill the deal, but alas, they ultimately approved it. Also, of note, once you get the acceptance letter or call, I would not be shy about asking them to increase the luck limit right then and there or call them if the approval comes via letter. An approval is an approval. In two of my instances, they came in at amounts that were lower than I was willing to accept. One called to advise me of the approval and I purposely responded in an unexcited manner. The bank person asked why I sounded disappointed. I explained that I was expecting a higher amount and that doing so would give me more flexibility in using the look. She put me on hold and came back with an extra $30,000 provided I took $15,000 of it now into my account. I agreed as long as there was no menus time. She confirmed no. 
I took the $15,000 in my account and the next day I was at the bank retransferring the $15,000 to my LAC account, interest was a couple of bucks, for an additional $30,000. Very interesting thread indeed. I just got turned down for a line of credit today with a business account at Wells Fargo. When starting a company, it seems your personal credit also needs to be good. At least until your business gets going my credit is 720, but my partner's is 580. Is it possible to set up a business account on one name with a decent credit score, then add someone else's name to account after your credit is secured? Update Limited Progress This week I would like to have at least 5 revolving accounts, within the next few weeks. Once I get the DUNS number, I need to figure out how to monitor the score. My end goal is to build, over time, so that I have several hundred thousand dollars available to each company too, thus decreasing the use of hard money and saving the business thousands in points fees. Week 2 Progress read a few articles about business credit this week and learned that one way to bump your score is to pay in advance of the invoice. In the business world, although it is fine to just pay on time, it seems you get extra points for being an anticipating pair. I typically work on the just-in-time payment approach, so that our business keeps our money working for us as long as possible, but, for the next few months, I will make an exception on these business accounts. Also learn that you can apply online at DNB for an e-update account. This allows you to log on and view all the information on your file and make any corrections. Note, have been warned by folks on the credit board's site to never attempt to make more than one update per day or your account will be locked confirmed with DNB Manager. Finding that the business credit process has just as many quirks as the personal credit world. Oh joy! My opinion of DNB is extremely low. They are unnecessary unless you are dealing with suppliers for services and inventory and their value decreases further the more global our economy becomes. Reality is that big money is not lent based upon DNB scores. It has now been about five months since I started this process. I logged on to DNB this morning and found that our company now has a paid X score of 80. The score is out of a possible 180 is defined as prompt pair. I didn't pay a dime. So thanks again to everyone who assisted in steering me in the right direction for this business credit issue. It may not be a determining factor in getting our company large business loans but it certainly cannot hurt. I am pleased with it. Congrats. Colon banana colon banana now that you have done it, you could build some self core, fully established with credit and then sell them. Any young upstarts out there that want to do that? Colon fast lane colon fast lane. Full girl, if you were starting in real estate, how would you have set this up to avoid the issue? Would it make sense to possibly set up a LLC to establish credit even if it didn't have current income? I was planning on setting up a LLC in the future, but after reading through this post made think sooner may be better. Mr. Pink. This may sound like a silly question but in order to get a paid X score you do need to actually make purchases from the 5 vendors that you sign up for business credit with right? I got my D&B number a few weeks back and I am starting to apply for business credit with vendors. When applying for business credit for example through Staples, are they going to give you a credit card? Or do you buy now and they send you an invoice later? I'm also trying to figure out which 5 vendors to apply for credit through. I don't really have much use for, Staples, Lowe's, FedEx, Office Depot etc. I need to figure out what I need to buy. I know I could use credit at the pump. So would I be applying for a gas card through Texaco? I wish I could get business credit through a restaurant. Colon SMXB, that would be easy to get my paid X score established. It's a little challenging coming up with vendors that I am actually going to buy products from. I think contacting D&B is probably best to answer these on my personal experience. 
we never relied on D&B or paid X for our ability to obtain credit. If I had it to do over again, I would have started establishing business credit at the same time I set up my first company. Even more importantly, I would have begun building relationships with local banks. Even if I didn't the money, I would open lines of credit and build a track record of performance. I can only imagine what I might have access to now, had I started with a few thousand, over five years ago. I prefer not to think about it too much, Imerza, I cannot say for certain whether or not you actually need to buy things from vendors in order to establish a score, however, seeing as the rating is based on your payment history, my guess would be yes. You don't need to spend tons of cash with these vendors. It can start with a phone bill, some paper and ink for the printer or fax, and some gas. And, yes, all of my accounts to date aside from phone have been credit cards. ATW, in doing my research, I did speak with many companies who sell shelf companies. Every single one of them offered to buy my second, five-year-old, LLC, which is currently not in use. I thought the same thing. Sounds like a potentially lucrative business opportunity for someone. I have D and B hash S for both of my entities, but I've never applied for them or done anything in particular to get them. I just started applying for as many business credit cards as I could once the businesses were set up. And of course personally guaranteeing them when my businesses had no credit history. I also set up checking, saving, and credit lines at a local bank right away. Three to four years later, I've got some pretty great business credit. I'd say Advantu is the best credit card company for business, because they allow you to request credit limit increases often, and almost always grant them. After three to four years I started with a $15,000 limit and now I'm up to $50,000, with convenience checks and everything else. It works just like a line of credit for me, which is awesome, because there are no annual fees. My second fave is Bank of Amex, and then probably Bank of America, because they have both granted me tons of credit. They aren't as customer friendly as Advanta though. Their website and rewards program are super easy to use. I eat at Red Lobster on them probably once every two to three months. Cheers. Hackjack. I went ahead and applied for business credit today with all of this was done online and took me around 30 minutes. Some of them didn't even require me to be a guarantor. They used my business sign and approved me right away. If you are unable to obtain Lux with a business credit report, what is the benefit of obtaining business lines of credit? It sounds to me that having a business credit score may protect against personal liability only. What am I missing? If I understand you correctly, you will have limited liability in a properly structured business entity. Getting to the point that the business has its own lack will require a personal guarantee. Please shoot it full of holes. I am by no means an expert on this topic, however, from what I have seen so far, it appears that although business credit is not likely to be helpful or effective in propelling your business in its Euro TMS earlier stages, it can be powerful once your company gains some real traction. It may not be year two, three or four a Euro broken bar. But once you start tracking up serious trade lines and show that you are here to stay, the personal guarantees are no longer necessary and your business truly stands on it. I Euro TMS own. I have yet to see this work firsthand but I have spoken to a few people who have this type of scenario in place. For me, it is about having the money accessible before I even know I want to do a deal. I would like to have multiple lines of credit, from several banks just sitting out there waiting for the next great idea. The focus is not so much on the D&B score although it can't hurt but more on building a solid, growing track record on a business, not personal, basis. Fulgirl, has having a paid X score of 80 helped you in any way yet? I'm strongly considering taking the steps for a business I just set up but will not be fully utilizing for another 6 to 12 months. Say I incorporate in LLC this year. And at the end of next I want our $200,000 construction loan.
amount isn't important, but it's not going to be more than that say the lot is paid for in cash. Could I bypass the no credit history of my company by having $50k $80k worth of cash on hand? That should make the bank comfortable no? Anyone have any experience in this? Hello. The answer to your question is. It depends on the lender. That is probably not what you want to hear, but it is, in my experience, the most accurate result. Also, I'd like to take just a moment to clarify a portion of your post so that you are familiar with the terminology you are using as it is easy to get confused. You discuss incorporating an LLC. Technically, that is not correct. You incorporate a business and form an LLC. The differences are subtle but potentially important, so please allow me to go a bit further. A corporation is, in legal terms at least, a living breathing entity just like you and me. It can do business, own property, sue and be sued so long as the corporate form is adhered to and followed. Generally, in most jurisdictions, this means that you hold at least one annual meeting of the shareholders, you issue stock, file the annual paperwork, pay fees etc. Corporations are run by a board of directors who answer to the shareholders. Almost every corporation will have, as minimum, a shareholder, a president, a secretary, a treasurer and at least one director. Depending on the state the business is incorporated in. One person may hold all of these positions simultaneously. The shareholders are the owners of the corporation. Depending on the state of incorporation, and the form of your corporation see, subchapter S or 501 C3, non-profit the identity of the shareholders is known or not known to outside persons. Depending on how you set up and run the corporation. There are various taxable events that might be triggered either for the corporation or for the shareholders. If done right, much of the myth of double taxation can be avoided. Corporate shareholder liability is generally limited to whatever amount of investment they made in the corporation in order to purchase the shares. Let's compare this to a limited liability company Ilkin LLC is, in a legal sense, neither a corporation nor a partnership. Conceptually, it is a hybrid between the two. It is a distinct entity created by state statute that offers business an alternative to partnerships and corporations by combining the corporate advantage of limited liability with the pass-through tax advantage of a partnership. The LLC is similar to one a general partnership with limited liability, to a limited partnership where all owners participate in management and all have limited liability, and three an S corporation without the ownership and tax restrictions. Because of the limited liability feature and the formality involved in its formation, an LLC is more nearly related to a corporation than a partnership. In most jurisdictions, one owner or member LLCs are generally treated the same as sole proprietorships. Profits are reported on Schedule C as part of your individual 1040 tax return. Self-employment taxes on LLC net income or loss must be paid just as you would with any self-employment business. Multiple owner or member LLCs are treated as a partnership by the IRS. LLC profits are reported and allocated to each of the owners according to the LLC's operating agreement. Each owner is given a Schedule K-1, which shows each owner's share of LLC income or loss. The owner then reports and pays taxes on this income on the owner's annual 1040 income tax return. Back to your question on business credit. It used to be that most lenders and their underwriters would look at an LLC as nothing more than a partnership. This meant that the typically would require that the borrower would be required to provide the same documentation as if it were a sole proprietorship. While this is still the case with some lenders, other more sophisticated lenders are looking at LLCs as legitimate business entities. Typically, if an LLC had been in business less than five years and or, or less than $1 million or $5 million for some lenders in annual revenue will have to produce personal financial for any member who has a 10% or greater interest in the LLC. With the economic read, lending climate as it is. It might be hard to get a lender to approve a one-year-old LLC on a real estate project. The better way might be to work the LLC to get lines of credit for a general purpose.
letting the dollar season then approach in your lenders when you are ready to go. When you get a line of credit, take as much money of it as you can easily get. Although you will start paying interest on this money when you take it, in most cases the interest is tax deductible. Take 20% and put it in a checking account to let it season for a minimum of 3 to 4 months. You are seasoning this money for these reasons. So even if the business does not produce cash flow yet, you can make all your payments and build your credit history. This always helps any business get even more money from new banks. Remember, banks lend money to those who do not need it. And when you season money this way, you look like you don't need any more which tends to increase your chances of approval. While nothing is ever cast in stone when seeking a loan, the foregoing at least as of this point will prob give you your best chance of obtaining an approval. Hope that helps a bit. Any questions, please ask. If you want more business credit info check out my blog in my sigtons of free info I have been doing this for a number of years. Chuff 1026, your SIG link was removed because it violated the user agreement. We require all members to be contributors to the forum before being allowed to SIG link to their business. Please take a moment and introduce yourself, in the intro forum, without promoting your business. Hang around and share your experiences. We will be glad to exchange knowledge with you, however, we are not your customers to be sold to. Hope you stick around and good luck. Colon cheers. It would be nice to hear updates on some of the post. With the banks pulling credit limits back, are they doing the same for the business credit also? Please update us. Thanks, Mike. Here is an update for you. I recently secured a $150,000 personal line of credit from a private investor. Fairly good terms. I showed him one of my deals, and he was very impressed by the margin, and my uncle's business who I partner with at this time. That's all it took, banged it out over dinner. I already have the use of about $200,000 from another source, that I have been using. And I can probably get another $150k $200k or so from my grandmother if I asked. All these are look from private individuals. Right now I'm saving my cash and just doing deals with my uncle as a partner, and my leg to fund my half. Thought I'd resurrect this thread. It's so applicable to my problems today I'm spoiled because I've been accustomed to using banks over the years that I've been in business. I have all fixed mortgages on my rental properties in the 5 to 6% range without points and commercial loan rates with terms to die for. Well, that's changed a bit. My business took a hit and so did my net worth. Banks called in my loans and I've all but been written off for dead and recently I've been searching ways of achieving alternative forms of funding to expand my business. There are interesting and creative ways of obtaining money but I'm not willing to sell my body parts. Well, not yet anyway. So, I've been talking with scumbag zoops, didn't meant to say that aloud. Been on the phone with hard lenders and money brokers who don't have a choice but to represent lenders with tight leashes and are in the midst of a serious dilemma. They have a lot of deflating cash but they can't lend unless collateral is 1.5 to 1, personal guarantees, personal credit FICO score and proof of previous success. It really has become a tight environment if you're seeking greater than 1 mm funding. Almost a nightmare. My credit cards all have lines that were reduced by 50% plus or down to levels where they are now maxed out which virtually killed my credit score overnight. It went from 700 to 660. Now that FICO is very important to lenders, it is imperative I somehow fix this. Dot regarding FICO score, I learned today hopefully someone can verify this that I can sign on as a go borrow on someone else's credit lines, credit cards, home line, etc., and share their credit lines even if I don't use the credit. Can someone at least verify this? Any credit experts here? The banks actually called your loans? I didn't think they did this unless in the rarest of circumstances.
I added my husband's name and SS hash to a few of my credit cards, after a construction business of his caused his credit some trouble. It took some time but it was effective. I will write more later, this tell keyboard is brutal. This happened a couple of years ago, but the short of the long story is that my company constituted approximately 3% of the bank's entire exposure, or at a regulated 5 to 1 leverage, I was a threat to their tier 1 levels. My companies were already showing cracks when average balances in the depository accounts were falling short of their agreements. Combine this with housing industry, real estate and retail and I was ripe for being bent over in workout. I should have fought harder, but when banks are in a corner, they get downright nasty and were making life miserable end of the story is that I refeed commercial property to get out of the bank. Since then, this bank closed more than half of their branches and their stock is in shambles. I always wondered if they worked with me instead of throwing me to the lions how it all would have turned out. But you can't fix stupid. And, to finish, my loans all had resets after 5 year terms with rates of 5 years treasury plus 250 basis points. These were rates that I negotiated hard for and people even during the loose money era couldn't believe I achieved. This short spread gave the bank even more incentive to boot me. So instead of calling the loan they simply wouldn't renew their loan at the 5 year mark and I would have been in default thus provoking clauses that would have blackballed my credit among the good old boys aka other local banks. Sorry to hear about your problems. Or should I say inconveniences? Many credit card companies and banks are cutting lines to what you owe, effectively killing your credit score. You could pay off a little bit of those balances to improve the numbers, but in my opinion that is not effective, your cash is more valuable in your hands, and nothing prevents them of cutting your line again if you pay more. So, again in my opinion, Keep your cash available. It is simply amazing that you are looking for money to expand your business these days, especially given the fact that you say your companies were showing cracks. I guess I'd be taking a different approach, so I commend you for your big cojons about the lines of credit. Not sure if that is still effective. After the 2008 credit score change is done by the three bureaus, that is not working the same. Problem is, I am not even sure if the three of them already implemented the changes last time I heard, only one was calculating the score with the new formula. In any case, I don't think it would hurt you, but it may rise a concern for the bank and then also reduce that other person's line of credit. Please note this is pure speculation on my part, as I have not been as active with credit scores in the past year or so. In response 1. Thanks for this sympathy. This inconvenience is very real among millions of small businesses throughout the country. I just spoke with a caterer and a stationery company both small mom and pops w or no employees and their stories make mine look like peach pie too. Exactly right about the credit card dilemma. FICO score literally went down 30 plus points in a matter of two months as a result of them diminishing the credit line right down to the open balances, consequentially maxing them out. I am especially concerned now that the score has dramatically dropped that gives the CC companies justification to shoot my rates sky high. Three, Expanding in this environment is a matter of survival. Hunkering down is effectively still losing me money in form of opportunity costs. Many of my competitors have gone out of business leaving a huge void in the marketplace. The plan is to be prepared for an L-curved recovery within the next 18 months. If the recovery comes, then great. If it's a W then we're better prepared. Four. The FICO scoring system is extremely concerning and I wonder how the other person's score will be affected. Are there any other ideas on improving scores besides paying off existing lines? First, let me say that I am not up to date on any recent changes to calculation procedures, which have been implemented by the credit bureaus. When we did this a few years ago, I did not notice any impact to my credit score. We had a credit expert, whom we paid, 
to ensure that the good news was updated on my husband's credit report. Similar to how you would go after them for reporting inaccuracies, it is also your right to press them about reporting the good points about your credit. So if you have any other lines, which are not on your reports or are not up to date, make sure you see to getting those vendors to report the positive feedback. The only other method I can think of, which tends to result in a few points per line item, is inquiries. With work, you can have some of these removed from your credit report. If you want contact info, let me know, Randall. I will tell you up front that her communication skills are lacking but if you keep after her, she has a magical way of getting things done. All that said, my credit score is rocking and I still can't get any new bank loans. I am on a new mission though, two meetings scheduled next week. Bump, for a very valuable thread. Any updates as of mid-2011 with current banking and lending standards? Standards?